So I am a little under the weather today, but that is not going to stop me from talking about dinosaurs. Because <laughs> dinosaurs are dinosaurs are awesome. I mean, I've always loved dinosaurs, and in particular, I've loved T-Rexes. And it's kind of just a coincidence that this month happens to be on my dinosaur calendar, which everybody should have. Um, uh, T-Rex month, September. Woohoo! I've loved dinosaurs ever since I was a kid. And when I was a kid, I liked them because they were like big and scary and they ate people in movies. Um, but as I've gotten older, I still like them for that reason. That's still awesome to me. But the cool thing to me now is just like learning how we know what we know about dinosaurs. It's really fascinating to dive into paleontology and to learn about all the new technologies that are allowing us to learn about dinosaurs that we didn't have like even just 50 years ago. Um, but this video is actually looking specifically at tyrannosaurs and a facet of paleontology that I didn't really appreciate until I came across this study. And the study illustrates just how rare dinosaur fossils are and that it's just, you know, a miracle that we even have them in the first place. Most organisms that have ever existed are extinct and the only way that we know about them is through fossils. But a couple years ago, a team of researchers at UC Berkeley were interested in knowing the preservation rate of adult T-Rex. In other words, how many there were versus how many we have. And it was kind of cool reading about this in the article because it basically just said um, that one of the researchers who's a professor at uh, UC Berkeley was holding um, uh, part of a Tyrannosaur fossil and was just looking at it and just going like, what are the chances that I have this right now in my hands? Like how rare are these things really? So basically what they sought to do was to figure out how many Tyrannosaurs ever existed and how many fossils of them do we have? Because we have 32 post-juvenile T-Rex skeletons. And you might be thinking like, why don't we use another dinosaur, like why T-Rex in particular, especially when you consider there are dinosaurs that we have way more fossils of, like complete skeletons. But the honest answer is just because T-Rex are awesome. <laughs> Duh. And we do know a lot about them from the fossils that we have. We have a good idea of how they looked throughout the course of their lives from a young age till they became an adult. We also know how strong their bite force was and that it was one of the strongest in the animal kingdom, around 8,000 pounds per square inch, which is just ridiculous to think about. It might even be higher than that. So when you hear like, oh, you know, or you see that scene in Jurassic Park where the T-Rex is literally like biting through a car, like it literally could have done that. that that's nuts. So what the researchers were doing at the time of this study really hadn't been attempted before for extinct life, which is like, hey, how are we going to figure out how much of an extinct animal ever existed? And the way they went about it was really clever. So we know that there's a relationship between an animal's body mass and its population density. Generally speaking, the bigger the animal, the smaller the population density because of competition. So what they did is they took living animals, their body mass and their population densities, carnivorous animals, and scaled them up to T-Rex size to get a rough estimate of their population density. Then they had to figure out how big was the area that T-Rex lived. Now at the time, about 66 million years ago, when Tyrannosaurs were around, they were living in Laramidia, which was the western portion of what is now today North America. There was a huge like seaway that was running right through the middle of uh, the continental um, US and all the way up through Canada and down through Mexico. And, and basically, Tyrannosaurs were confined to just the western side of that continent. Now at this point, it is obvious that the number that they're going to figure out from this study is pretty uncertain because we can't totally agree on how far uh, Tyrannosaurus rex's range was in the area that it lived. And then the next piece is also going to give you a very different number depending on what you choose. Uh, for this study, they said, how long did T-Rex live? How long was the species around? The number they gave was 2.4 million years. After figuring all that out, they took the general lifespan of a Tyrannosaur, figured out how many generations of T-Rex could have ever existed during that 2.4 million years, um, and then they got these numbers. At any given time, there are around 20,000 T-Rexes. And quoting from a New York Times article here, the uncertainty around that estimate was very broad. The same computer simulations indicated, with 97.5% probability, that there were at least 1,300 adults, but not more than 328,000. Wild difference. And we're like, it's probably somewhere within that range. That's a huge difference in terms of number of Tyrannosaurs running around. My god. So that means using the 20,000 T-Rex number over 2.4 million years, 
there were 2.5 billion T-Rex ever. And the high estimate is, well, it's way higher than that. So you're thinking to yourself, you're like 2.4 billion versus 42 billion. That's a huge discrepancy. I mean, like, what are we supposed to take away from these numbers? Well, the thing is, is that 2.4 billion and 42 billion, while being very different in terms of uh, their size to each other, um, compared to the small number of T-Rex fossils that we have, that means we do not have a lot of T-Rexes, no matter how you cut it. In the study, it says that the minimum median number of T-Rex fossils that we have compared to how many that ever lived was one for every 80 million T-Rex that ever existed. Now, that is crazy, because that's basically like saying that if all the Americans that are alive today, all 340 million of us, if we all died and only four of us were found, that's what that number is saying. That means 99.999, however many percent of T-Rex that ever existed, we just don't have. And that feels like kind of insane and almost a little sad. Um, but I guess there's a few different ways to look at that number. It does mean that like every single fossil that we find of an extinct animal is so precious because we only have so few. And you could use that in arguments against this whole fossil trading business, private fossil collecting, um, just because it's like, wow, oh my gosh, especially for these large animals where we don't have a lot of their fossils. It's so important that we keep these and that we're able to study them. But without getting into the weeds of that, there is also an explanation for why so few dinosaurs end up getting fossilized, in this case T-Rex, but you can apply this to any extinct organism, really. The reason why we have so few fossils is because fossilization is such a tricky, tricky business. I mean, it is so hard to keep fossilized remains for as long as they exist. If an animal dies, it has to get buried fairly quickly in order to start fossilizing because if it isn't, as most animals typically are, they're above the surface, they get eaten away by scavengers, or they get torn apart by the elements. But then if the remains do get buried and they do get fossilized, it has to survive. The rock that fossils are carried in are constantly changing. And so if in the case, you know, you get your bones all buried and they're fossilized in a rock, well, if it gets transformed in any way, like if it gets swallowed up by the earth and turned into magma, it's gone forever. But even if the fossil does survive, it then has to reemerge on the surface of the earth for us to find. And then if it does reemerge, we actually have to find it because if we don't find it, it just erodes away. There's photos of this online where there's like fossils that are literally coming out of a rock but because erosion is happening, the fossil's already getting destroyed, you know, before we even spotted it. So it's really just all by chance that we find these things, that this process of fossilization actually happens, and then the fossil itself survives however long after the organism died, right? Like millions and millions and millions of years until it reaches us to study. So honestly, makes me very, very thankful that we have any Tyrannosaurus rex fossils at all. It truly is a miracle. Um, even if it is just such a small fraction of all of them that ever existed. And I do kind of think that maybe somehow in the future we'll be able to find a way to better find fossils and maybe collect way more specimens of extinct organisms. Um, but I just don't know what that technology looks like. I mean, you can never really predict that stuff, but maybe there is something out there just waiting. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I will say uh, this was very nice for me to do. My throat is now a little bit sore. Uh, but I got excited and I enjoyed talking about this. Uh, and and I needed this because I, at least for me when I'm sick, if I lay in bed all day, I am screwed. I will feel awful. Um, being able to like do something to keep my brain active is very, very nice. Um, so thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.